Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about trust tax rates. Are they very high and what can we do about that? I'm an estate planning attorney. My name is Richard Barrett. I'm with Smith Barrett LLC and I'm one half of the estate planning guys. So this may have happened to you before. You may have talked to an estate planning attorney about putting together a trust. And once you're done with that discussion, you feel like you've got a lot of good information, but it takes a while to think over. So you say, I'm going to come back to you. I want to go do some research. I want to talk to my CPA or my financial advisor. And those are all good ideas. You don't want to just jump into anything you don't understand. But very often we hear from folks who hear back again, well, I talked to my CPA or I talked to my financial advisor and they said that trust pay taxes at the rate of 37%. Well, that would be alarming to anybody because that's much more than most people's individual tax rates. And so that is alarming. The thing is, while it's true that some, some trusts do pay taxes at that higher rate, most trusts don't. And I'm not going to get way into the tax weeds here, but what we're talking about in most cases, whether it's a revocable living trust or even an irrevocable life insurance trust or gifting trust, is that those trusts are what are called grantor trusts. You don't have to memorize that term, but it's important to know that the grantor is the person creating the trust. So most trusts, they both the, the grantor creates the trust and retains certain powers, things that they can do as the grantor, even in an irrevocable trust. And reserving those powers makes it so that the IRS looks at that trust as a grantor trust, meaning that the income would be distributed typically to the, uh, to the grantor, or even if the income is not being distributed to the grantor, it's, if it's a grantor trust, the grantor can elect to pay the taxes himself or herself on that trust. And that can be a really powerful thing. In a revocable living trust, that's always going to be the case because that trust uses your social security number as the tax identification number. But even if you set up an irrevocable gifting trust for future generations, while you're alive, a lot of people like to set it up so that as the grantor, you're paying the income tax on whatever income the assets in the trust are producing. And that allows the trust to keep accumulating that money and growing it over time for your beneficiaries, which more likely is what you're intending as opposed to paying taxes. So let's be clear that 37% tax rate is not impossible to hit. Most people just don't do so. So if you look at the IRS rules for this year, when this video is being recorded, income over $13,450 is taxed at 37%. That's what's called a compressed tax rate, meaning the rate of taxes that you pay or that the trust is liable for goes up and up and up. Um, very quickly from $0 to $13,450. But as alarming as that sounds, it's important to talk with your estate planning attorney about whether what you're setting up is a grantor trust. And if it is, that typically means that the taxes would be paid by you as the grantor at your own individual tax rate, as opposed to um, paying at a compressed tax rate of 37%. Most individuals don't have a tax rate that high. So it's often something we don't need to worry about. And we do see families that resist using a trust, even a simple revocable living trust, which could really help them, especially avoiding government intrusion, which is the probate process, getting the court involved. You can avoid all that with a revocable living trust and the tax rate that the income of the trust assets is paid is paid at your rate, the rate of the grantor, the person who creates the trust. So in most cases, when someone has given that advice, and a lot of times it's not even the financial advisor or the CPA, it's someone who picked up an, episode, an uh, edition of Kiplinger's or Money Magazine, and they read really quickly in there, in alarming big font, trust pay taxes at 37%. Just know that most taxes don't, most trusts don't pay taxes at that rate. Most of them are grantor trusts in which you as the grantor would pay those taxes at your own individual rate. It's worth talking to your estate planning attorney about it. And it's not that you don't want to talk to your CPA or your financial advisor. They're key important members of the team too, but we want to get everyone on the same page and talking about what the taxes are really going to be as opposed to what they might be if the stars align and certain things are done and it's not a grantor trust. You're most likely not going to run into that in your typical family planning, even if you have significant wealth. It's going to be in most cases where you're putting together a grantor trust and so you will never hit, the trust will never hit that 37% uh, tax rate which can be alarming. Just remember to think about it as a grantor trust and ask your estate planning attorney, is this a grantor trust? And if it is, he or she should be able to explain to you what the tax rates will look like, at least approximately, and they're not going to be at that 37% level. Thanks for spending the time with me today. If you want to find out how we can help your family, click the button below to go ahead and set what we call a discovery meeting and learn more about how we can help you. Thank you.